While browsing AliExpress for interesting things, I came across this little LED downlight. And I have featured LED downlights in the past, but this one is particularly interesting because it has a very, very slim uh, power supply. Compare that to the ones that normally get supplied that you just wouldn't ever be able to basically fit through the hole the downlight comes through. And this is fine if you're working on a shelf or something like that where you've got access above it, but in a ceiling, it would be quite good having a suitable slim junk box, maybe even a plug-in socket, and uh, then being able to feed this through the hole and then just shove this up into the ceiling and it would hold in place. Let me zoom down this a bit because it is quite small. Also note that this has the stainless steel tang. Is that the best description? It's a little uh, clip which doesn't just hold the cables at right angle here to secure them, but when it's pushed through the ceiling, it will bend and provide that friction to hold it in place, but there's still possibility to drag it out the ceiling for maintenance. Compare that to this thing, which is horrific. This would definitely need access because to actually put this through, you have to kind of like fold these horrible sharp metal strips and then try and jam it through. That would be quite tricky. Probably better done from above. But if you put this through, say, a plasterboard ceiling, a sheetrock ceiling, and then you tried taking it out, it would be goodbye ceiling. These are little swivel ones. They're quite nice. The ones that are designed for use in jewellery cabinets or displays. But anyway, the subject of this video is this one. Let's power it up and see what it looks like and what its electrical characteristics are. Then I'll open the light and then I'll open the power supply and we can reverse engineer it and see is it any good. So I'll bring in the anti, the Hoppy's little brother. The Hoppy is fine. It's just uh, better suited to higher loads. I really, I keep saying this, I really must change the flex in this because this is an absolutely fake flex and it's super rigid. It pushes the meter about all over the place. Um, right, so I'll plug it in. It could do with being a thinner flex. Plug it in and it puts out a decent amount of light. Let me just shine at the wall. Oh, that is quite good, actually. That's a fairly decent beam angle, but not too harsh and sharp. It does have that mottled effect in the end. Anyway, I should put that there. And the hoppy, well, it's super flickery as usual. The, uh, our local supply voltage is 248 volts at the moment, which is pretty normal for here. 2.8 watts, 0.5 power factor, typical electronic power supply. 2.8 watts, they said 3 watts. That's that's okay. That's fine. Righty-ho, let's unplug this. Uh, I should mention, this is a typical chinese piece of test equipment. I don't recommend these because... Uh, Although I use one, uh, the use of speaker connectors for mains voltage is frowned upon by the electrical regulations. Suitable for technical people, not suitable for uh, non-technical people. It could lead to things, fingering of electrical connections, and particularly if you pull the neutral out first while the power is still on, because then the power will go through the load and then through you. Anyway, let's unscrew this. I'll have to zoom back down now. The front lens screws off as normal. And there is a TIR, Total Internal Reflection Lens. It's just a clever way of controlling light. And then we have the little LED in here. Now, is that actually glued in? Let's uh, gently prise at it with a sharp, pointy thing. Is it anchored down? It does feel like it's glued in. Oh, no, it's loose. Right, tell you what then, let's uh, pop that out completely by getting these screws out the back. Is this screwdriver going to do that? Is it the right type of screwdriver? Maybe. Am I just forcing the first screwdriver with a cross-shaped head that came to hand into it? Most likely. Little soft tapping screws. So this little bracket comes off with those screws. Now shove this in. There is heat sink compound on the back of it. It's quite odd that it's the, it, it says Cree, I don't think that means anything, but it's quite odd that it's got the side cut off. It's not, I mean, it's a fairly standard form, but they've cut the side off purely to allow it to go into here and give a cable exit. Right, okay, we've seen that. I shall just sit this back in here. I should also mention that when you, although this isn't glued in, uh, when you, put the lens in, 
it pushes down on that. It sits over the LED and it should be sized so that when you screw this on, it clamps the whole lot into position and there should be no slackness. If you can put your finger in and wobble the lens, then that means it's not tight. Okie dokie, let's uh, pop this off and shove everything out of the way. Shove, shove, shove. And since this is two hand, we shall undo these little clips. If I can undo these little clips, the clips have undone. Revealing the circuit board. Now, is this an isolated supply? Technically speaking, it should be, but we'll find out in due course. I'm not seeing an obvious connection across, but we'll find out when I reverse engineer it. Right, tell you what, I shall take a picture of this and we can see what the circuitry is. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore it. This LED can also just be run on DC if you want. In this case, I'm running it from just under 3 volts, and the current is 100 milliamps, and yet it still puts out quite a punch of light. It's very useful. This should be possibly useful in an off-grid application. I shall turn my power supply off and disconnect the leads and put this out of the way. All you'd need there on a 12-volt system is three of these and one resistor in the range of 10 or more ohms, probably rated one watt just to give it extra leeway and that would be suitable for up to the um, sort of like the peak voltage that batteries are like to get charged to a 12 volt system. Okie dokie, let's explore here. So the incoming supply goes straight to the bridge direct fire, no in incoming fuse or anything like that, they're saving a lot of space here. The chip is powered directly, it's got a high voltage input and it's got the negative and uh, the data sheet doesn't show it but there is a 30k resistor now i do have to say i didn't find this exact number but i did find an equivalent chip what is that equivalent chip someone else had done all the dirty work for me they had already discovered that this chip here is an equivalent pinout to that uh, the chip that's used in here So the output from the bridge rectifier goes to the smoothing capacitor and the positive goes to the transformer because this is a small isolating transformer. I wouldn't say it's a body safe isolating transformer, but it does at least make some effort to separate the supply, the primary side to the secondary side. Uh, this end of the transformer is switched down to the zero volt rail via this current sense resistor, 3.9 ohm. They've got two positions for these. Um, so they can fine-tune the value, but they've obviously found that 3.9 is all that was needed. That's a super standard resistor value. And if you wanted to tune it, if you wanted to, say, make these lower power, you could increase that. Um, and that would, because it senses the voltage across that, 0.6 volts is what it senses across that. There is this capacitor here of unknown quality, which is the class Y type situation capacitor. It's marked CY1 here. And that does connect the input to the output. How do you tell if a capacitor is actually a surface mount capacitor is class Y or not? It's not marked. Capacitors are never marked. On the output, we have a very generous 100 volt, 3 amp rectifier, uh, a capacitor on this side, and then a uh, little load resistor just so that if the output goes open circuit, there is just a slight load across it just to keep the voltage from rising too high in that capacitor, probably. Uh, and that's it. Let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic. So there, there's the AC supply coming into the bridge direct fire, the 3.3 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. There's that extra resistor they've added in. It's also worth mentioning that that data sheet, I'm pretty sure it showed a little snubber network. Uh, the usual thing, the diode, just clipping and going to a little uh, small capacitor just to take the peak of the spike with this little discharge resistor, um, just to take the little spike when that... Uh, MOSFET in here turns off, but they haven't included that. They never do. Uh, it's just, you know, they just don't do that. I don't know why. But uh, there's the current sense resistor, 3.9 ohm, that by measuring the voltage across that, it determines the level of saturation of the, the transformer, the primary. Well, the transformer itself. And uh, then it builds the field up, magnetic field collapses, it goes through here, so it's putting portions of current across, so that's why you can program 
roughly the power that goes across uh, with this resistor. And uh, it goes via this generous Schottky diode, 100 volt, 3 amp, uh, little 100 meg fired 60 volt capacitor, 10k load resistor, and the LED load. And there's that suspicious 1 nanofarad um, capacitor. The reason for the 1 nanofarad capacitor between the input and output is to provide a, a path back for coupled noise across this transformer that could radiate as electrical interference. It just keeps it a little bit quieter. But there we have it. I have done some more computations regarding using this in an off-grid application. Yeah, 10 ohm would be the lowest value of resistor you'd use, but you could go up to about 33 ohm if you wanted to have Long run to, or, or higher if you wanted. It depends on your illuminatory requirements. If you're just looking for a gentle splash of light to find your way about at night, it could be extremely low current. It just takes one or two milliamps through an LED to put a decent amount of light out. But there we have it. Uh, it's a very dinky little power supply. Very tiny. I like the form factor that it's just basically this little cylinder that can get shoved through a hole and then followed by the light. So there we go. Interesting. I like it.